Well, hello, dear friends from Pondicherry. This is on the southern east coast of India. This is, um, has a long history. You know, n nobody really knows how far back uh, the history of this city goes. Um, they've found uh, Roman artifacts uh, that predate um, Christ here, but also um, its strongest influence presently is the French influence. Uh, the French uh, came here. Of course, the Dutch and the British both fought uh, for control of Pondicherry as well over the years. Um, it it uh, remained under French control until the 50s, where it finally gained its uh, sort of independence. Uh, but you can see the influence of French culture in every uh, area of this city. Seeing some of these buildings, uh, you know, you'll have a building that uh, is labeled a Bibliotheca uh, from, from the previous French influence, and now it's a cultural center. The color palette here is just amazing. You know, you have these really sort of muted uh, pastels. You have these uh, arches that are everywhere. You have um, the architecture that uh, still retains a lot of um, the French influence. I'm in Barathi Park. This is uh, more of a central park in the sort of the old uh, White Town area that I'm in. And you can see uh, the park is sort of constructed in that very European style. Um, there's a central sort of uh, monument in the center. You have um, sort of concentric walkways that sort of leave and go around the central part. And then uh, kind of a spoked um, uh, area that you can walk through the park all sort of with pavers. Um, it's really beautiful. It's a great place to stop um, for the moment when you have a second uh, to relax, contemplate, get out of the sun. There's plenty of shade with the trees and uh, lots of people here relaxing. This is um, in the morning, it's a Friday morning, so you know, a lot of people relaxing, having a, a nap on the, the bench behind me. So the Our Lady of Angeles Church was erected in uh, 1738 or 1700s. It has that classic sort of French cathedral, Notre Dame design. It's just gorgeous inside. Um, the ceilings have all these lovely paintings, there's sculptures, uh, the floor is marble. It's very quiet and serene in here. That's just the beautiful colors that are sort of muted. Um, and blues and creams and peaches and um, gold. Uh, of course, the statues of Christ and the crucifix um, also are there. And people, this is an active church. You know, there are people uh, saying prayers. Well, this is the Manikula Vinagara temple. This is um, a temple um, centered around Ganesh. Uh, I'm told that uh, a lot of people come here, get married, or uh, couples will come here for the blessing for marriage. It's a really well attended temple. It's so uh, just colorful and and all the figurines, the endorments, uh, all the deities that you'll find uh, in and around the temple. Um, it's just so much more colorful and uh, almost like just illustrated here, uh, really different than what you would find in, in Northern India in terms of the temples there. There's just such a rich color and uh, lots of people inside uh, getting blessings, um, paying their respects saying prayers, uh, getting blessings. It's a really uh, wonderful temple to come and just visit. You know, you pop in, sit on the floor, have a conversation, um, learn a little bit about uh, Ganesh or Hinduism. Uh, people are very accepting here. Well, because Pondicherry is right on the ocean, they have this really well-developed uh, river walk. There's a fairly well-known uh, lighthouse that's down there. Um, Beside me here, you'll see this, this massive statue of, 
of Gandhi. Of course, you know, he's, everybody knows who he is. He's referred to the father of India, and he was basically the champion of the, the peaceful, pacifist um, movement that helped India gain its independence from British, um, British rule. So he is obviously revered in this country, um, like uh, as much as somebody like George Washington would be uh, in the U.S. Oh, there's like this great little bake shop just right on the beach. And uh, after walking on the beach in the sun and taking in the sights, it's a great stop to have a little bit of a snack. I guess you could consider the typical French patisserie with lots of macaroons and croissant and buns and uh, espresso. So an, a welcome stop uh, after spending some time on the beach and to take in a little bit of the French uh, cuisine that Pondicherry has to offer. So this is a Shiva temple. The other one I was at earlier was a uh, Ganesh. This one is called the Shiva Veda Parishinar Temple. Uh, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, and I'm sure if you have a better pronunciation, let me know uh, in the comments. Uh, but this is a Shiva-centered uh, temple. And then uh, just a couple, a couple blocks down the street, there's a, uh, a Vishnu temple that we'll visit as well. So the temple behind me is, is the temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu. This one is the Sri Varadarjana Perumal temple. I'm probably mispronouncing that one as well. All, um, all of these, uh, you know, are dedicated to different uh, Hindu deities. This one happens to be dedicated to Lord Vishnu. Uh, we saw the one that was dedicated to Ganesh earlier. So this one, you know, like typical southern Indian Hindu temples with this sort of like pyramid of, of deities and figurines that sort of um, act as the archway entering the temple. Things sort of come back to life after the sun goes down when it gets a little cooler. Uh, people find it uh, a little easier to make their way down to the waterfront once the midday heat has receded a little bit. Um, Lots of, lots of young people just sort of taking in the water, um, enjoying their time here, relaxing, taking a long weekend. Uh, I met a girl from, uh, who's going to school up in Chennai, uh, design school, and she took Friday off to make it a long weekend. She said she was skipping class today so that she could come down here for a couple days and relax. I don't blame her. It's a great place to to take a little bit of a break, grab an ice cream, walk down the, the promenade, enjoy the, the seaside, um, enjoy the cooler breeze coming in off the water, um, take a selfie or two with folks. Uh, just a great time to, to relax. Well, good morning. I made my way down here to the beach early this morning, uh, try to catch sunrise uh, here in Pondicherry. So this is on the east coast of India, so instead of sunsets, you catch sunrises here. Um, so it's about, about 15 minutes before sunrise. Hopefully I'll be able to um, catch it this morning. I don't, I'm not sure how much uh, cloud cover there is today. Uh, but if you can get up early enough, I hear this is a great place to catch the morning sunrise and uh, seems like a nice way to start your day. And that was sunrise in Pondicherry. Another beautiful start to a day. Today I have a, a little bicycle tour booked for the city. I'm going to wrap up here at the beach, finish with the uh, sunrise and head to my hotel get ready for that um, little two-hour uh, bicycle trip through uh, the city of Pondicherry and I hope to share a little bit of that with you as well. Okay, okay go. So traveling through Pondicherry on bike is just great. You know, you get that nice breeze 
from the bike, you cover a lot of area. And if you do it in the morning, you have a lot fewer uh, cars and people in traffic. So this cathedral is known as the Sacred Heart Cathedral. And um, it's about almost 100 years old. And uh, it's a really interesting um, sort of display of the fusion between sort of uh, native um, Indian culture and the Christian uh, symbolism. Uh, behind me you have the Mother Mary, but um, here they've put a sari on her. And uh, my guide has told me that often people will come and, and give offerings to the Mother Mary and they'll bring uh, saris, but the, the church wants them to leave the price tags on it so that they can resell those. And that money goes to help um, restore and maintain uh, the church here. But, uh, and you can see at the base of the Mother Mary, you have these figures and uh, that's really uh, reminiscent of things you would see in um, an Indian uh, temple or a Hindu temple. Uh, so you have this whole blend of uh, Christian and Hindu sort of like symbolism that's happening just in this one church. Let's see if I'll crash. Let's see. How am I doing? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> So part of the bike tour, you know, you'll make your way through different parts of the city, black town, white town. You'll also see plenty of um, examples of local architecture and some of the, the old houses. A lot of these houses have been left um, when people moved to France and then uh, they used as vacation houses, that kind of thing. Uh, but also part of the tour on bike is uh, you'll end up in a, one of the, the markets here. What's the name of this market? What's the name of the market? The name of the market is Goubert. Goubert was the first chief minister after the French left since 1962. Gu Goubert? Goubert. Goubert. So this is Goubert market. Now this is a market that's a, quite a bit more diverse than some of the other markets that I've been in from in Mumbai or Bangalore. Uh, this has a lot more variety. Uh, this is sort of like your everyday market, but everything from dyes, paints, vegetables, um, spices, peppers, uh, bananas, uh, eggplants. Uh, you'll find pretty much everything you need here in terms of variety. Ginger. Uh, this market opens at 4 in the morning and, uh, and then goes till 8.30 in the evening. So. They have to get the trucks in early, otherwise the street would be completely blocked. Um, but it's a really, just a really uh, vibrant, uh, you know, area full of color and action and, and energy, people selling and buying. So it's been a great little bike ride. So Pondicherry on bike is great. Yeah, really recommend uh, booking a, a tour on bike because you can cover so much distance and see so much things and if you have a great guide like I did you get just a ton of information about the different neighborhoods the architecture and the history so if you're a westerner or white in complexion and you visited India before you probably know that if you sit down for very long you end up becoming kind of an attraction uh, for selfies so that happens maybe a little less in some of the touristy places like Pondicherry or some of the bigger cities uh, but it's not uncommon to sort of be sort of mobbed by uh, you know young uh, group of males who want to have selfies and call you bro and give you fist bumps and ask you where you're from and okay done all right bye bros bye bye, 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 bye. have a good one bye. take it easy bye, bye. have a good one man Are you from? Bye, bros. keep it keep it real yo Hug. Hug it, hug. hug it out, bro. <laughs> I'm Tim. From America. America. It doesn't bother me. I'm pretty used to it. It seems to happen, you know, in most of the cities that I visit in India. Uh, but as a, a visitor for the first time, you may be a little surprised by it, but it, it's fairly normal here. Um, I'm told that basically, um, a lot of the Indians that do that will be from smaller villages or smaller towns 
and so uh, they're here on vacation. So part of part of being here on vacation is uh, getting a selfie with a, a white Westerner, you know, that's sort of a, a novelty, and they usually will put it on their social media or they'll share it with their families. This is my last evening in Pondicherry. It's been a great city to explore, um, delving into all of the, you know, confluence of culture that a city like this has, um, going all the way back to its own history, and, and then, of course, the influence of the French and the Dutch, the Portuguese and the British. Um, it made me think a little bit about travel in general and, and being inspired to travel. And part of um, traveling and what I kind of intended to do by making these videos was to hopefully inspire folks to go out and find their own adventure, whether it's, you know, in the places that you find in these videos that I make or finding your own path and your own adventure. One of the, one of the things I've learned over the years of travel is that, you know, I used to think that traveling was like carrying around a, a camera in your head and you would take snapshots of the experiences that you had and you'd carry them with you. And, uh, I realize now that, at least for me, traveling seems to, you know, really shape the person you are if you allow the places you visit to affect you. You know, you become a different person by going out and meeting the world and seeing different things and being exposed to different cultures and different people and different languages and different ways of doing things and all that, you end up, you know, when you return to wherever you call home is, uh, hopefully you're a little bit changed by the experiences that you have. And I hope that maybe I can, I, I would like to think that I could inspire, you know, folks to go out and find their own adventure and see the world for themselves and and be as inspired as I have uh, by the places I visit. Um, travel is, is one of those things that continues to surprise, amaze, delight, challenge, and excite me. And if I can inspire anybody to do that, then I think that that's an exciting thing to be involved in. So I would encourage you, if you're on the fence about traveling or think that a place like India is too daunting or um, too different to, to try to go a little bit beyond your comfort zone and experience things. Uh, it helps you grow as a person and your awareness of the world will grow. Um, so that, those are the things that I've learned on my, on my travels. This trip and previous trips, I'm continually amazed. Um, one of the things that I repeat over and over again about travel is that I'm almost always uh, inspired and amazed by the people I meet. And uh, wherever you go, you find just the most lovely people in the world. And it's always such a refreshing experience to have to realize that wherever you go, you meet wonderful people and that the world is filled with people, regardless of what you see on the news or on social media or uh, whether people are arguing online, uh, you know, the majority of the world are, are lovely and kind and decent and, and charitable and giving folks. So that's been, for me, that's been reinforced over and over again. And that's one of the things I love about travel as well.